and an acknowledgement. Yeah, I mean, that's why I say, like, the museum or, or uh, a more tradition, uh, watching Noche de los Lapis, that might be an important part. It is an important part of, of, of schooling. What I'm trying to do is, okay, this is what schooling already do, does. But there are limits to what they're doing, and it's important for us to try to push against those limits to say, where is the things that are being excluded from the particular way of thinking? Yeah. I'm curious if you're familiar with uh, the ECUNI, the Espacio Cultural Nuestro Discos, inside the XSMA, mm -hmm. because it seems to be doing something sort of similar to the Parque de la Memoria, providing this um, space of artistic production and especially trying to attract school groups. I'm just wondering if you have an opinion about it or if you see a connection with the Parque and the ECUNI. I'm really angry at them because they started doing that after I wrote my dissertation. <laughs> they should have waited. I mean, they should have started earlier. No, I, I, I know uh, a few of the people working it, and, and I know they're doing a lot of really interesting work that is in some, I mean, like any space like that gathers, it's an even, right? Some of my work is more, more provocative than others. You know, that I have no idea how, for example, because of the interest of the dissertation, I don't know how many schools visit that. I don't know how, how uh, curricula interacts with that space. So I, 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 that part I haven't been able to research. Yeah, Finia. I, I have a short remark about education and books that has to do with Yugoslavia, my country, because after the wars in the early 90s, uh, when they started publishing new editions of uh, textbooks, history textbooks, at the moment when history would come to the breakup of Yugoslavia, there was a new chapter that had only one line, and it said, said talk to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> and I, learned this, I learned about this at, at the conference. I, I haven't seen it because I didn't live there at the time, and my kids didn't go to school there. But it, in, my, in my mind, it actually does what, what you would like them to do with things. You know, ask your parents and question them. I mean, the nicest things think kids do always question their parents, so now right. they can question them about history, which is what you did many years later with mm -hmm. your father. Uh, but my question has to do with, in that time period when democracy uh, transition and democracy came to, to Argentina, there was still dictatorship in Chile for, for almost a decade and so on. Did the writing about those other dictatorships change in the history, in history textbooks that you read? Well, the thing is that when the dictatorship started entering textbooks, that was not the case anymore. Because the dictatorship didn't start entering textbooks in 83 when the dictatorship was over, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. so by the time the dictatorship entered textbooks in the early 90s, and became, when it became prominent, which is in the late part of the 90s, that was part of the artist. And many of the textbooks, and that, that's different. So some of the textbooks mention the dictatorship in Argentina as something that's kind of isolated, and some of them mention the Plan Condor and mention the relationships between different countries and the U.S. and all that. So that, that, that's vary uh, from textbook yeah. to textbook. Okay. Well, if there are no more questions, we thank you. Thank, thank you all.